Hey, what's up, everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. Today, we're going to be discussing the what's next on Chris Eubank Jr., the former world title challenger. Um, we're gonna Eubank is a guy that floats between 160 and 168. Most recently, 160, where he I'm not sure if he's still considered to be the interim champion there, but he fought Mark Moore, uh, not Mark Morrison, Marcus Morrison, in his. Uh, on May 1st on the zone and got a one-sided decision win there. He hadn't fought in um, close to a year and a half since a second round TKO where he really didn't get even started um, when he beat Matt Korobov and Korobov had to pull out with a shoulder injury, um, you know, in the, early in the second round. So <clears throat> Eubank now, following that, you know, he's an avoided guy. Uh, part of it's also because he is one-dimensional and he wants a big fight um, or bust, or, or he wants to fight nobody and just kind of stay busy, uh, want, you know, nobody or nobodies, and just kind of stay busy and stay active once in a while, but he doesn't seem to want to fight that get to a big fight fighter, you know, um, he had to fight with James DeGal, he had to fight with Korobov, and since then he hasn't done shit, and that was in 2019, now I know Corona delayed some things, but he could have came back in 2020 and he didn't. Um, he waited until May 1st of this year. So he's with Team Sauerland now. So pretty much that means he can he can make any kind of fight. Um, so let's run him through the one, uh, uh, middleweight and super middleweight and see what's possibly next for a former world title challenger, Eubank. So we start with the middleweight division where he's still technically currently ranked. We start with, and we look at the top 10, we start with number one, Jamal Charlo. Charlo ran scared from Eubank. This was a fight that was possible last year. I didn't blame Charlo for taking on Gary Vinchenko instead. I felt like he was a little bit uh, higher up than Eubank. But why didn't Charlo want to fight Eubank after the win over Gary Vinchenko? Because he's running scared. He fought Montiel, or he's fighting Montiel next, I think. And that dude's a nothing. He should be fighting a guy like Eubank. He obviously doesn't want to fight Eubank. This fight, in my opinion, not possible. Number, well... Charlo was number two. Number one is Triple G. Triple G, I mean, I don't think he's got Eubank on his radar. I just don't think so. He's got other possible fights that make more sense, like Ryota Murata, possibly Canelo. Um, I don't think he cares about Eubank. I mean, Eubank might be a back burner option for him, so I guess technically I wouldn't be surprised if Triple G decided on him, but I think Triple G has other better options. So, you know, that make more sense for him at his point in his career. So, Eubank is obviously not trying to sell himself by fighting anybody else uh, who's on the rise. So, yeah, I don't see this one. Number three is the undefeated Demetrius Andre. If Chris Eubank really wants to fight somebody, he should fight Andre, in my opinion. Andre wants an opponent anyways. Eubank, if he wins the world title, he sells himself. He could get Canelo if he beats Andre, which I think he would have a, a good, solid chance of beating Andre. You know, it's a makeable fight. I think this fight could uh, bloom and could happen if both sides want it. It can be made, and I think it could be made if the two sides get frustrated enough and say, fuck it, we'll fight each other. This fight is possible. Use the second from the right lane to Number four for California is the newly crowned WBA regular champion, Arislandi Lara. Now, the WBA could order this fight if Eubank is still technically considered the interim champ. They could order it, and it could, you know, but I don't think Lara would want to fight Eubank. It, he's kind of too big, because Eubank floats between 160 and 168. Lara just barely moved up to 160, technically, and he's still considering staying at 154. So, I don't think Lara would want that smoke with Eubank. Number five is Sergey Daryovichenko. I would love to see this fight. I think Eubank might be down for it if he can't get anything else, but I'm not sure Darry Vinchenko would want it, but I say why not for Darry Vinchenko? Maybe not his return bout after getting kind of beat up by Jamal Charlo, but I do like the fight. Um, number six is Ryota Murata, the WBA super champion. I mean, I could see Murata possibly being interested, excuse me, if these two sides don't have anything else to do, like Murata, is in preliminary plans for a unification bout with um, Triple G late in the year. 
per mile. Use the second but from the if right Triple G were to get the Canelo fight, the California 198 that might by Salia. Present, present itself. This fight might present itself. Eubank and Murata. I'm leaning towards a no because I'm not sure Top Rank wants Murata to get in a ring with a guy like Eubank. But I'm not going to rule it out completely either. It could happen. Um, second from the right lane to take exit 97. <laughs> then keep left at the fork. Number number seven. Well, he was actually Eubanks Keep number seven, technically. Fourth. Number eight is the undefeated Jaime Minguia. Minguia's fighting in April. Um, I mean, fighting in June. I don't see this one. I would love to see the fight. I think it's a great matchup, but I don't see it happening. Um, just because I just don't see the two sides coming together to make the fight. I'm not sure Minguia would be interested in fighting Eubank. I, I'm going to lean towards a no, so I'm not seeing this one. Number, number nine is Rob Brandt. Rob Brandt's in a lot of um, uh, contra contractual disputes right now. Plus, I'm not sure he has a style that Eubank would be interested in, so I might lean towards a no. Number 10 is Englishman Lee Liam Williams. This one's possible. If Eubank really wants to stay here, they possibly could get some kind of an eliminator going here. And I could see uh, Eubank and Williams because it's a domestic rivalry, you know? It's a, it's a, it's a all-British showdown. They're both contenders, and they both would work with the zone real easy so it's a definite fight that could be made and that this one's possible okay that's the 160 168 real quick canelo at number one he's been calling canelo out canelo's not gonna fight him who has eubank beat he hasn't beaten anybody except for james de and that was in february of 2019 and i think most would argue that de was past his prime. So, is, is Canelo really interested in Eubank? I doubt it. Okay, so I don't see it. To take exit 104 for Acres Street. Number two, after Eubank, I mean after Canelo, number two um, at 168 is Daniel Jacobs. I don't know if Jacobs interested, is interested in this fight. I'm not completely ruling it out, but I'm not sure he'd be interested in this one. Jacobs, we don't know what he's going to do next. He didn't look good in his last fight, so I'm not sure he'd want to get in there and take the risk against a guy like Eubank, but maybe he would because this is a fight where these two guys would probably talk a lot of shit to each other, and it might be the kind of fight that would get Jacobs into a bigger fight if he was victorious. Not completely ruling it out, but you don't, we don't know. Number three is still Callum Smith for me. I don't see Eubank wanting to fight a guy like Smith. He's tall. Um, it's an easy, it's an easily makeable fight, but I don't know if he would want to fight a guy like him. So I'm leaning towards a no on this one, but I, I wouldn't completely rule it out. Number four is um, undefeated David Benavidez. Eubank would be down. Would Benavidez be down? Would Team Sauerland and the PBC come together to make this fight? I hope so, and I think Eubank would be down, but I, I don't know if, if he would be, and I don't know if Benavidez would be either. It's one of those ones where you're like, okay, they've kind of both been protected. Mile, Do they want to the fight each other? Take exit 104 if Breaker they did, City. the winner could put themselves in position for Canelo. It's another one of those fights that Eubank might want to look into and take a risk on so he could get that big Canelo fight that he wants. Number um, number Middle five is the undefeated Caleb Plant. Well, Caleb Plant, the IBF champion, is fighting, almost for sure going to fight Canelo next in September. They're working on the fight. It's almost for sure going to happen. Feet, turn so, left onto South Eubank Acres and Plant is not going to happen. Plain and simple. Number turn six. Onto South Acres Street. Number six, coming off the loss, undefeated Billy Joe Saunders. Would he want to fight Eubank next? He's probably going to be out the rest of the year with that orbital bone, orbital bone fracture. Eubank's probably going to be looking elsewhere. A rematch between these two could possibly happen at some point, maybe next year, but I don't think it happens next, so I'm going to say no. Number seven, um... I, I believe it's still John Ryder on my list. And um, Ryder and Eubank, I think, is a good matchup. Ryder's, I know he got ordered to challenge uh, David Morrell for the WBA regular championship. But since Ryder's with the zone, why not make this fight? I think it's a good domestic rivalry. And I think it, it could set up a potential Canelo fight or a bigger fight for the winner. So why not fight each other? I think this fight makes a lot of sense. But Eubank's got to want it. Um, number eight is Lionel Thompson. Don't see this one. He's a tricky fighter. I don't think Eubank would want to risk it against a guy like uh, Lionel Thompson. So I'm going to say no. Um, number nine. Number nine is uh, 
is um that was uh i'm sorry that was uh lionel thompson number nine would be um uh anthony durrell for me i believe it's it's still anthony durrell um right. I, yeah no durrell doesn't want him at all there's no way durrell would fight him the durrell just completely pads his record he fought to a draw in his last fight he did not look good Next and left, i don't think left. i don't think he'd want to take a risk against him and I think that's pretty much it. I, I, I forget who I had as my number 10 fighter. I, I'm not a, I, I forget who I had ranked there because I haven't done my top 10s in quite some time. But, yeah, there's some fights that make sense. A lot of fights that I think make sense for Eubank if he wants to make them. You know, Eubank has to want to make on the right. some of these fights. You know, he cannot, he cannot um, sit here and continue to just fight whoever just to uh, pad his record and hope that one of these big names fight him, you know? But he, he just can't do that. So he's going to have to take a risk. He's going to have to fight in some kind of eliminator. He's going to have to fight somebody better, um, you know? And he might have to take a risk against guys like Demetrius Andre. He might have to fight guys like um, David Benavidez or, or, or something like that before he could get to that next level name like a Triple G and Canelo. So I think Eubank needs to take some risk and... Um, and I think, you know, he, he, there's a lot of makeable fights for him. So hopefully he, he gets them. Um, I like Chris Eubank, and I'd like to see him in the ring. He can sell a fight, but he needs to beat that kind of B-level name recognition fighter to get to the A-level name recognition fighter, especially if he wants Canelo or Triple G. So that's it, guys. That's what's next on Chris Eubank Jr. I hope you enjoyed it. True boxing. You've been hit with the truth.